Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to LCK Spring 2019. It is 1-0 in favor of Gen.G, as you can see on your screen. And thankfully, that is there, because I know a lot of you tuning in wouldn't believe me if you heard me say that, because Hanwha have been looking so much better than this squad. Gen.G have not been performing to the level that we expect of them. But if we have a look sort of down the line at what Hanwha have been able to achieve, the last three series have not necessarily been in their favor. They lost to Diamond Gaming 0-2. They lost to Kingzone Dragon X 0-2 after 2-0-ing them in their last convincing victory. The Afrika Freaks 2-1 win was not something that you'd really, you know, put on your resume to say that you're great at League of Legends because honestly, we saw yesterday that the Afrika Freaks have not been playing to top form. So Hanwha Life sort of struggling here in this series, but we'll have to see as we get into Champion Select very swiftly, whether things in the draft are going to get reevaluated for Hanwha. Well, we'll see what ends up happening here as Jace is the first champion banned away here by Hanwha Life, despite having Thal on their team and first pick available. So Genji now banning away the Zoe might be signifying that they want to go the Lissandra Avenue yet again. They also might just think that Lava's champion pool is not big enough for him to be a relevant threat here, right? So they also might think that if they ban away the Zoe, they ban away the LeBlanc, they ban away his highest performing champions, then they can really put a dent into what Harm Alive can throw at them. They are going to take a uh, step away from that, though, theoretically, as uh, the Vladimir ban is certainly against Tal rather than Lava, even though it can be flexed. Well, interestingly enough, I mean, we just got to see yesterday Syndra versus Lissandra and what can actually happen yeah. when you're piloting the matchup correctly. So, so far now, Hanwha Life banning away the Rise, and maybe now they're the ones signifying that they want to get their hands on the Press Q champion. There we go, though. Uh, this away. is the, uh, the the Kill Gen G ban. Fly gulps. Yeah, that is the uh, kill Gen G ban. Look at his face. His like, teeth. He's like, oh. uh, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a <laughs> you told second. Me, you told me I was going to get Lissandra But again. guys, I'm really good at a champion. <laughs> Fortunately, that's not quite enough because there are a lot of bans to come in here. As There's a LeBlanc ban, an understandable one. Lava's best performing champion so far. He's only been allowed to play it a couple of different times. And Lava is also another one of these... Lissandra players, so that ban from Hanwha is going to gimp him just a little bit. The Silas is going to be first picked as I get a uh, very worried look from LS. <laughs> Don't give this away. Yeah, as he uh, stares over me in apprehension as to what Seven is going to happen in the next couple. 12. And um, some of those victories Tom have been... Ezreal is available. Yeah. So we're just going to give away Ezreal yet again. And now it's going to be red side Tom Kench Ezreal. Which yeah. does mean that if you want to draft entirely top centric, you are allowed the freedom to do so. However, Talia being hovered now swapped over to Aatrox. Oh, I don't and know about that Lulu. One. Nope. Peanut is uh, like scaring us. us a little bit. He's, uh, we're not ready All for right. this. Found the Tom Kench button, and yeah. uh, that's what we want to lock in. Good. Oh, man. They, they didn't need to put us through that, that turmoil for 20 seconds. But the Ezra Tom Kench, the understandable lock in here for Gen G, and this is a large win button for them. But normally, they don't get this bottom lane and the Lissandra. Yeah. Normally, it's either you ban away the power pick for Fly, or you ban away the power bottom duo for Gen G, which is the Ezra Tom Kench. So now, Hanwha, what do they have to fight back? And a Freljordian bottom lane could certainly work here as. Ash Braum would be able to get some things done. Braum fantastic into the Tom Kench, which is why we see it locked in so quickly. We'll have to see what ADC ends up in accompanying All right. this here. This could be an interesting one. A little bit surprised not to see Callista Galio potentially come out, especially when you already have the Silas. But instead, it looks like it will be Braum in Kaisa. And now. Oh. If you are at Gen G, with so many mid laners having already been banned away, you can just pick a mid laner here. Maybe we'll see Aurelian Soul actually picked and then more target bans focused away. Alternatively, you could get Syndra, in which case she would be queen of the mid lane. Or you can pick or a jungler can... and pinch the jungle pool for could Bono. Do that, except the jungle pool's uh, pretty wide open. Yeah, Bono looking... doesn't exactly have the largest effective champion pool, though, because with the Lee Sin locked in, 
He's got four games on that one. He's got four games on the Xin Zhao, despite a pretty pitiful win rate. And then everything else is on Olaf. He's got nine games on the Olaf. And that's going to be the first ban, obviously, here from Gen G. So they're thinking that Bono's effective champion pool is not as large as uh, what he's been actually able to put forth on the Rift. He's played six unique champions yeah. so far this season. So certainly can play a lot, but at what level can he actually play them? So having a look at the win rates, things are a little bit of a worry. You got 50% win rate one and one on the Zac. Zero on the Rek'Sai, now with an extra game. He was the one that debuted it, I believe. In the last couple of days in their first match of this week. So Azir gonna be taken away from Fly. They're really digging deep for Fly's champion pool in recent days. Mm, Rek'Sai now being banned away. Not the most threatening champion against what Gen.G has already been drafting, especially given the fact that they are red side. A little bit of a surprising ban. Now Irelia. Well, that, that is a ban against away. Roach, because we saw Fly play the Irelia when she uh, was pre nerf, and uh, it wasn't a great time. As Karma being looked at right now. Still a flex pick, but certainly feels like something that Fly should easily be able to pilot to some priority yeah. in the mid lane. And now Yasuo being hovered, and the Irelia pick made me think that maybe they're trying to get their hands on an Aatrox, but the Asuo is locked in. Don't think that we will be seeing that. Instead, we're going to see a Zac pick, and I have really... No, Ooh, we're okay. not. No, the Yorick coming in for Tal. Oh. Now, Jace is banned away, but Jax is still available. There are a lot still available. The, the Aura is also yeah. still available, which is the real scary one. I think that Roach just needs to snap Jax here in response to the Yorick. Do you like we'll Jax see. more than you like uh, something like a Fiora that uh, Genji are hovering yeah. right now? Because I also think that Cuvee is the Fiora player. He plays Fiora in a very interesting way, often a very sacrificial way for Genji, but has been able to split push Genji to victories in the past. And now it's going to be on Roach to do so. And so we are going to have a knife fight up in top lane. Never seen the Silas versus the Karma actually play out. Both obviously going to take teleport respectively, but the explosive extended team fighting for both of these teams is present. I actually just, I like Karma in melee matchups just in yeah. general because you can mantra your W and just suck all the life out yeah. of him, right? So it can certainly be something that you can capitalize on. And keeping a Silas in a position that you want him is very easy because what happens when you hijack a Karma as Silas? What does Mantra do? Does it turn all of your <laughs> abilities into Karma, into karma abilities? Yeah. You just don't get the Mantra. Wait, no, 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 no. You get the Mantra when you press the Mantra button, right? And you get to Mantra one of no, no, Karma's you, abilities? It's like Jace. You get QWE. Oh, yeah. That's kind of cool. I think. All right. This is so. another one of those another <laughs> one of those times where we're like, does the cannon ult actually stun when he's not cannon? I don't know. Well, we'll have to all learn alongside you guys. We were linked to a video yesterday, but unfortunately, we went to bed because it was midnight when we got back home. And now we're back here again. So unfortunately, haven't actually figured out every single Silas interaction with these ultimates, and we're excited to learn alongside you as yep. to what happens when you hijack the karma because it felt like we had a pretty good gauge on the ultimates that Silas has been able to employ as we have a look at the first lineup. And we are about to jump into game number two here. And this is a very important game for Genji. They need Absolutely. to win this, getting the 2-0, helping with the point standings. Here we go. All right, game number two. Can Genji actually get the 2-0? Let's find out now. NG fans are some of the most amazing fans in the LCK, I think, because it doesn't matter how yeah, Genji are doing, they're always nice. so loud. They're always so supportive. We'll see whether they're actually going to have their dreams come true here today. I feel like I feel like Genji fans are very similar to the KT fans of old, you know? <laughs> Witnessing the KT roller coaster over and over again, but always standing true yeah. to their squad. Oh, we might have something going on here. You know, I really don't like that suit. That color of violet, it's just not... It's 
not doing it for Many him. Under no, it's not your personal favorite. And especially favorite. if he gets eaten by Count Von Count, Tom Kench, it's mm. just, it's not really working out. Hey, Especially at least the white he gloves. You think you think he's trying to make a fashion statement, but yeah. Well, I mean, the fashion statement's just the wrong kind of statement. I think you know his statements yeah. can be uh, both ways, and uh, yeah. this is the wrong wrong side of the statement. I'm uh, I'm with you on that one. That being said, his uh, jacket does match the color that Tom Kench turns when he devours him. Yeah, I think they're trying to go for the synergy there. Yeah, I think I like that one. I like that. They're one. However, if they're walking around in lane, I mean, it's not looking great. And having synergy once you're inside the stomach of uh, your lane partner is not exactly a synergy that you're necessarily looking for because you're no longer there. I guess you just haven't watched the, the newest Aquaman. I have. I have. Yeah, well, you had a lot of synergy with that uh, that whale or something. That shark? I don't know, dude. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I felt like that movie... I stopped paying attention halfway through that movie. I was like, this is a really pretty movie. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay attention to the... It to the things that pretty. things that it's good at, you know? And that is lots of nice colors, lots of cool CGI, and zero storyline. Okay. I like that. I also like Jason Momoa a lot. I think he's a fantastic actor. Same. I actually... And it felt... You know, the fact that he's in Stargate Atlantis makes a lot of sense for him being Aquaman. So I felt like, you know, things were right there. Like that because yeah. they talk about Atlantis. Yeah, and he lived Stargate. in Atlantis. You know, Same words. Yeah, see? <laughs> see what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? Picking nice. up what I'm putting down? <laughs> oh, yeah. There right. we go. Let's get into the game, though. Let's have a chat about no. how these lanes are supposed to go. <laughs> as uh, Fiora versus Yorick is one that we've seen Tile play out, actually. It was not against this particular Fiora, it was uh, against Noggery. And Noggery took a very long time to win the matchup, but eventually oh. he did. As, all right, Peanut. This is the Peanut of old that we've been missing for time and time again. It is a level discrepancy not quite there yet for either side, and that's going to be the resonating strike. We almost have the Bloblets being brought out, but Lava makes the first rotation. Inspire is going to come in there. Can they actually take these Bloblets down? No, as the Teleport comes in. You've got the snare to land. Safeguard gets Peanut out, but can fly. Be so lucky. Inspire. Pretty good. Doesn't actually manage to land, but there we go. Stretch Armstrong comes forward, but they do have the Rift Scuttler. So Fly doesn't actually have to fall down for this one. Yeah, and this is a really, really big win for Gen G. Peanut did a magnificent job of getting in there, interrupting the Wolf Camp, getting Bono's passive on Zack, stealing the teleport basically away from Thal up in top lane, which means that the lane now, I do believe, is pushing back into Roach. He has teleport advantage. That is going to be a huge yeah, one, though. Everything is just going great. Yeah. Right now for Gen G. And you look at it and you're like, oh, they managed to save the Zack. This is fantastic, but. This top lane is not going to go the same as the last time we saw the Yorick versus Fiora up there. And unless Bono can actually get over here and affect change towards the top side, it's going to be a really big issue because if Fiora can get accelerated, it becomes one hell of a problem. Yep. That's an interesting ward spot, actually, by the Fiora. I guess that what that's signifying is that Roach is going to be content with allowing the lane to come all the way up and just doesn't want Zack to sneak into the brush and try to put her down right at the exact timing that she's looking for the freeze up in top. And as we were talking about the lane setups and stuff, mid is a gentleman's agreement and bot likewise is a gentleman's agreement. We're not likely to get any sparks flying on that side of the map. This entire game comes down to Fiora versus Yorick. So if Fiora gets really far ahead, Hanwha Life doesn't have a reliable answer to her which is normally the case when yeah. you're up against the top viewer. And so, basically, I would expect junglers to have a lot of focus around here, around level six. The thing that I really like yeah. is the bridging that uh, Gen.G have done with their team competition. Often I see a mid lane Fiora and I'm like, oh, this is just terrible. That being said, her mid game is fantastic. She's always had a very strong mid game. She can wave clear very well. She can help out the rest of her team. As far as 2v2s are concerned, it's great to have a, a Karma there with you because you can see how much utility she brings to these skirmishes. And once Peanut hits level 6, he's going to be a powerhouse himself. And now Bono is going to Plastic Slingshot himself, but does decide to cancel and he doesn't have Cell Division. This is a huge deal as Peanut cleans up some wards and Gen.G remain in control of this early game. 
And right here, Fiora is going to end up teleporting back, but the problem is that she already has one and a half waves pushing into York. So what she can do now is try to crash this wave and then advance into Zach's blue side jungle to get intel for Gen G and locate what camps does Zach have remaining. And so in a way, Thal actually ended up winning out because what Roach could have done is trade with Thal as the wave is crashing, take a lot of HP knowing that you're just going to teleport back as long as you don't die, and then the reinforcing minion wave is in such close proximity, you get the lock, teleport back, lane state is very different, Oh, okay. Peanut in position exactly right timing as Lava is going to connect and empower W. That gets a lot of his health back. As you can see, gets the Karma abilities. He's able to use one round of Mantra spells. And that is going to be that. Fly is going to get out scot-free, no flashes needed on either side. And now it looks like Cloud Drake to be started here for Gen G. Not a lot of response available here on the side of Harmal Life Esports, playing around priority very, very nicely. As Roach gonna be put in the baby cage, but dashes out. The lunge pretty good at uh, keeping you out of trouble there. Yeah, it is indeed, and this game is still looking relatively even. Obviously, the Infernal Drake coming up in four and a half minutes can definitely spice things up as both teams are wanting to be getting their hands on that. I would say that most likely Gen.G a little bit more than Hanwha Life because all of their champions are going to be able to utilize the effectiveness of it. Yep. The thing I want to talk about is what we spoke about last time around, right? And uh, what we said was that Gen.G automatically wins, basically, at 20 minutes in if they're even or within 2,000 gold of Humble Life. That is not going to be the case for this game. You're looking at a Zac that scales beautifully into the later stages. He's going to be more useful than Peanut is in the hyper late game, who becomes basically one kick. And if he can get that one off, then they can potentially win a fight, but stopwatches exist and it makes it very difficult to make that work. Zac, much more reliable. Kaiser as well, hyper carry for the bottom side of the map, this time out for Hanwha Life. It's not like the Callista that dominates the mid game, and it allows you to get these scrappy team fights working. Bono's gonna fly on forward, but fly, he's got Inspire, and this is exactly what Karma does. She never leaves the mid lane, and yeah, she can do so very safely. Endlessly waves clears over Even and Even as over. a chalice, oh yeah. my goodness. We are going full support, as I believe it will be. Athene's on Holy Grail into something like an Ardent Sensor to make sure the ruler is as powerful as possible. And I definitely do like that itemization on the side for Karma. Although I wouldn't have been too against an AP Karma build, primarily because Karma is one of the only sources of primary magic damage. Yes, Ezreal does do quite a fair bit, but I think that it's highly unlikely to expect that Hanwha Life would stack magic resistance. And so in that way, maybe. Yeah, and well, also I, I feel like if you're bit. playing around a 4-1 composition like Gen.G are, you want to have as much wave clear as possible, right? right. So you get a loot and Zeko in order to clear up minion waves while Roach is causing a ruckus elsewhere, and Humble Life don't have the range to siege you. In fact, range is at a premium here for Humble Life. If they're in a siege scenario where yeah. they're trying to force things, it's not great. They do have a lot of great dive. Bono can certainly get in there as the Zac and cause problems, but... 5v4 is still going to be a problem here for Hanwha Life, so I still really do like the ability for Akama to stop any of that dive potential by just removing minion waves from the equation. Tal going to lose out on that trade exponentially, and uh, that means the Peanut not going to be able to have that counter gank opportunity because Tal just can't even utilize Bono there. Now Rip Herald is coming up. Wouldn't be too surprised to just see Peanut come over to it right away, Q over the wall and start the Herald. There you go. Beautiful. All right. There yeah. we go. Things working out. I might actually have a commentator sitting next to me for the majority of the broadcast, and I'm very excited about that. Things actually going right here, and Genji getting things right beautifully in this earlier stage of the game. Okay, so 1,000 gold is going to be the lead just from lanes working out better, but Bono is going to stop that Rift Herald from being taken. Do you think that Rift, that, that, is Scuttle Crab Rift Herald's offspring? Um, they do seem to have a little bit of similarity. Yeah. yeah, the color, the coloring is a little bit different, but we see that in some species. Okay. In the animal kingdom. So can we call Shelly like Scuttle Mama from now on? Sure. I can, I can get behind that. You can get behind that. What's Shelly's last name? Ooh. That hasn't been thought about. That's true. It. All right. So we've got a dub. 
a last name for Shelly, and then we can name the Rift Scuttler. Yeah. Um, you got any ideas? Uh, I'm thinking. All of my, <laughs> I've thought of four different names, and none of them are appropriate. <laughs> 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 it's not okay. It can just be misconstrued very easily, you know? Oh, man. Well. Not quite sure. I'll, uh, I'll have to get back to you. Maybe, yeah, okay. Maybe we'll, in the we'll, have a bit of, we'll have a bit of a brainstorm. We've got to make sure that we... You, you know how uh, in uh, radio shows, they're always telling you what's coming up? Just yeah. to make sure you keep listening? Well, yeah. we're going to be n giving you Shelly's last name. Just stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. That's the highlight. And, uh, and we'll get you there. We yes. got quite a lot of names on the rift. We got Agatha and Bertha. So oh that's yeah. the left Gromp and the right Gromp. Right, got it, got it. All right. Then we have Julia and Julian. Yes, we do. For right. maidens on opposite <laughs> sides of the map. Exactly. Yeah. If Yorick is versus Silas, not for any blind pick, because unfortunately <laughs> we don't have that anymore. Um, what else do we have? We have all of our wards that we've named uh, over on the Pop Smithy side of things. Turrets are named Brick. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. And I was I was about to say the brick isn't a name, and then I remembered Anchorman is a thing. So of course brick is an actual name. Proper noun, everyone. Brick Tower. That yep. is his name. Yep. And don't you disagree with it? Mm -hmm. As uh, Hummel Life has started off this infernal Drake, Genji in position to try and stop this one. As you can see, both top laners are ready for a teleport. The maiden is available. And actually, Harm Life, if there is a teleport to come out from Roach, if you can get second teleport on the Yorick, you can leave your Maiden in the lane and actually get a lot of value out of that pickup. Not going to be something that they can actually capitalize on just yet, as Harm have not pulled the trigger. Peanut still waiting in the wings, wanting to pick up this Rift Scuttler, which he should be able to gather for himself. Some valuable, immovable intel here for Gen G. And I think that right now what's really happening here Okay, is the anti kench oh. maneuver here as Bono's looking for a kidnap. Connects the dots and is able to get them back forward. First Blood goes over to Sung Yoon and should be able to make it another one. Double kill on the bottom side of the map. And Peanut yeah. should be able to get himself a Rift Herald, but that is not going to stem this bleeding. Yeah, and this is a really, really powerful turn of events here for Hanwha Life as they just exploded the bottom of half of the map wide open they end up picking up a lot of plates down in bottom lane they're gonna get themselves the infernal dragon and actually kaisa has stopped recall can ruler be a hero oh we're gonna follow the oh. true shop right that was actually very close the key was there with an unbreakable anyway there. that is going to be the trade as our uh, shelly is going to get picked up here for gen g peanut it's a good answer but not one that is going to even things out by any means the blue buff has been started. Lava wants to pick that one up as uh, Khan made it. He's got to stop taking that one down, and it is going to be a successful transfer. But look at this. The plates have just fallen. Genji a little bit late on this one, but they should be able to get first turret. Over to Roach. It's really interesting that they elect to use the Herald up in top lane as opposed to mid lane. And the reason that I say that is because with no objective on the map here at only 14 minutes, the laning phase is able to be extended a little bit longer. Let me talk about that in a second, though, as we see Zach come in over here. Neither party ends up flashing. And so, Zach, I mean, this was a pretty cookie-cutter gank. That being said, I mean, if flashes yeah. had been used, that wouldn't have happened, right? Yeah. It just would have meant a return gank to come in there. But yeah. at a pivotal moment in the game like that, where Infernal Drake was on the map, when Shelly was on the map, it's a time where you probably want to keep yourself alive for a little bit longer. So it's certainly a fantastic turn of events for Hanwha, but I probably would have invested some summoner spells if I was the Genji bottom lane. Hindsight 2020, so not going to throw too much judgment forward. What if someone's hindsight isn't 2020? I don't know, you probably get their hindsight vision check. Can you do that? How, how can you? Yeah, what, what does that even look like when you're hindsight? Yeah, because you have one of those things that you put on the wall where the letters get smaller and smaller. Do you have that for hindsight? What's the check? Oh, man, I guess that's like when a, a flat earther does yeah. an experiment and it fails and then they're like, you know what? We must have done something wrong. Yeah, that's maybe maybe our whole fundamental view <laughs> of the roundness of the planet is actually uh, not correct. I just watched the Flat Earth documentary yesterday on Netflix. Yeah, you told me about it. It, it sounded was. very depressing. <laughs> I'm not quite sure 
That would uh, be the word that I would use to describe it. I think that you're being very generous. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where you were going to go with that one, but I'm definitely satisfied. As uh, Athens on Holy Grail is completed, you got Ravenous Hydra done for Roach. He can continue causing a ruckus. Even has the Phage there just for some extra utility. Get around this lane very, very nicely, and he's happy to overextend. This is exactly what you want out of your Fiora. If she's free to draw all of this pressure towards the top side, that's when you know things are going right. As Lava turns up, he's going to try his hand. It's slowing down the Fiora push. And the game is in a pretty stalled state right now. However, Fiora continuing to try to ramp up has the Ravenous Hydra already completed. Going to be oh having man. the Phage as well, but the split push on the Fiora will not commence until way later yeah, in I feel the like game. You need Trinity Force and Spear of Sojourn before you really are able to dictate the pace of the matchup between the Yorick. We saw Tal even navigate this matchup very, very nicely until approximately 35 minutes into the game. Like, really, really late. As Hanwha, they're looking to try and knock down this top outer turret, and they should be able to do so relatively easily. Peanut down there with Fly, trying to raise the bottom tier one turret. And so trading top tier one for bottom tier one, not the end of the world by any means. Yep. As we do have Roach, I believe, pathing towards bottom. I think he wants to get oh, wow. in. Wow, and Roach. actually, tempo advantage here. For Gen G yeah. as well as uh, Void Seeker not going to land. Kula has to play very carefully because he knows that the Kaiser did get an accelerated start. Lava going to continue pushing on here, but bottom side of the map, you've got Gen G pulling away. Pretty understandable Gen G move here, making sure that they only take as much as they can guarantee. Will it cause this wave to cause damage to the turret? The answer is basically no. Silas is not going to stick around top side. No one to overextend on the Hanwha side of things either, as we do have some normalcy proceeding here. Arden Sensor done for Fly. And with a Trinity Force build coming out from Ruler, that is actually going to be a huge deal because he's going to be auto-attacking more, larger amount of attack speed, less of that reliance on just landing cues. Wants to have the passive stacked up as much as possible and weave these auto-attacks in as uh, Sangin going to at least avoid the W. At this stage, though, Ocean Drake coming up in about 15 seconds as Lava steals away the ultimate from Ezreal. And one thing I do want to point out is that Lava is doing that build again. Oh, yeah. That is not oh, no. the best for going later on into the game. Yeah. I'm a sad panda. Yeah, the Rod of Ages into the Spirit Visage and the Iceborn Gauntlet would be the correct answer here as Sangyun is going to at least finally take down the Grom. Which one's that? Is that, that is Agatha. Ag Agatha. Yeah, left to right. Oh, A, B. All right. All right. Okay. Ag Agatha and Bertha. Yes. Beautiful <laughs> names. Beautiful names. As, um, Lava's going to move, move on over. Looks like the blue buff should be taken here by the Silas. As some normalcy has hit the rift, and a thousand gold is certainly nothing to write home about. But... As this game progresses, that Infernal Drake is going to look way better than the Cloud Drake that's circling the Gen.G members. Peanut at least is going to be able to get around his jungle faster, but that is not something that you want in these straight-up fights that Hamwa are going to be going for. They're going to be piling in. They're going to try and jump on you and crush you. And it doesn't matter how much movement speed you've got, because uh, Elastic Slingshot is going to be faster than that, guys. That's just how that one works. Well, Hanwha Life picking up the Ocean Drake here. Not going to be the biggest of victories, and I only say that because it won't really come online again until and if Hanwha Life does end up having Baron. And even then, it is still quite difficult to fully get the bane from it unless you end up having two to three of them. Yep. Ruler wanted to go back and grab himself a uh, Trinity Force, but first he's going to pick up his Brambleback. His Peanut started that one off for him. Vision available on the Baron buff here for the red side of the map generally is something that we're going to see, and it's control for Gen G topside for the moment. But we yet to transition over there on the Hanwha life side because we're only 30 seconds after the Baron has spawned. And bottom of the map is where Roach is going to start his onslaught towards the enemy base. And this is where can Gen G play around a split pusher is going to be our question. Oh, Fiora still not yet at that mode yet. You can see that she's still waiting on just one more item. 
in order to complete into the Trinity Force. Man, Genji is just playing the most Genji composition. It's like they've discovered that 2019's too hard, the meta's too hard. We're going to go back to the meta that we knew. <laughs> and that was playing around a utility mid laner, having a Q Bay at the time on something that could really cause pressure in a side lane, like the Gnar that he was famous for, but also able to get into a team fight. And with Fiora backed by a Karma that has so much utility that he has at the moment, Fiora can actually get things done in a team fight potentially. Is uh, there's the hijacking of the kick? see whether this siege is actually going to work out as Fiora is actually going to rotate around the maiden is going to be dealt with that's going to be 50 gold delivered over to Genji 50% of the outer turret health bar is going to remain now two items are completed for Roach it feels like a really slow one two three go at the start of a race you got the first item yeah second item that's where you press your button that's when you start to get your turbo boost okay yeah okay, yeah and wait then for what? a bit then after what? two, and then one, that's when you're off. That's when you're going. And if you're oh. playing Mario Kart, you got the little fire coming out from behind your cart or your motorbike, depending on which game you're playing. What what character did you pick in Mario Kart? Uh, Daisy. I was a stats abuser. What? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All Otherwise, right. if I was playing uh, N64 or SNES, yeah. it would either be Toad or Yoshi. Because, again, I'm a stats abuser. Nice. Yeah. I like that. I can get behind that. Nice. I also really like Funky Kong, but again, stats were great. So, there we go. It's one of those guys. Came down to Pokemon as well. I was having this conversation with Scarazard earlier in the week about his favorite Pokemon. Because oh. he, he posted uh, all yours? his favorite Pokemon in all of uh, the different types. My personal favorite is Flygon, because I think he's adorable. I just really like Flygon. What? It looks like a, a hairless flying squirrel. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a dragonfly. I think it's cute. Okay. Yeah. As uh, now we're going to get a kickback on Roach, but he's got a lunge. He's going to be fine. But this time the siege is coming out on Gen G's side, and they're also unable to make things work. True shot barrage stops Sung Yun's back. And that might be important. Samara just looking to try and get vision control around their area of the map. Yeah, not too much actually going on here. As well, maybe Fly will. Never mind. We're just going to. We're having the lull state. We are. We are. This is now bats bounced back and forth. So, hold on. <clears throat> Let me just break this down. Nothing's going to happen for the next minute and a half. Hanwha Life will proceed to the Cloud Drake. Genji may or may not contest them, depending on how they're feeling at that point in time. Uh-huh. I'm going to throw out a spoiler alert and say that they're not going to. Okay. Fiora will continue to attempt to shove bottom. We're going to wait for Red Buff to come up. Song Yoon will consume that. Uh-huh. And now let's get back to talking about the real important things. All right, so, so back to Pokemon. Back so to Pokemon, yeah. My, my point was is that Scarazard had a tweet where he had all of his favorite Pokemon as per type, and, like, one of them was Muck. They had Ooh. one of them was Electrode. And I'm like, dude, Gross. these are some really weird choices. Yeah. But I respected it so much, right? Okay. Because I was, like, a real meta slave when it came yeah. to playing Pokemon. So, like, I look at the dragon position, and I'm like, why aren't you picking Garchomp or Salamence? Right. You know, like, what, uh, what is... What is, what is your problem right now? I mean, Dragonite's also good, but he's oh, just okay. not quite as uh, overpowered as both of those choices. That, okay, okay. You know, either special or physical. I really did like the Ball Beam Sub Punch variation in our early Gen 6 meta, but otherwise, not exactly what you want to be talking about. So I, I looked at it and I was just, I was jealous. I was jealous because he was so capable of stepping away from what are just good Pokemon and right. deciding instead to go for the less represented and uh, things that he found cool. So that's what I'm going to try in uh, Sword and Shield All when right. it comes out. That's, uh, that's my decision. I'm going to try to go for the less represented Pokemon. Can you guess what my favorite is? Um, I don't know. It, what, which Pokemon would most likely be a jungler that could take Spellbook? Um, oh, this is really hard. Because uh, the summoner spells just <gasps> don't exist in Pokemon, right? So... This is really difficult for me. Um, oh, I'm not sure. Throw you a bone here. All right, yeah, throw, give me a Gengar. Hit. Oh, it's it just that's not a bone. It's just giving me the answer. Yeah. All right, I wouldn't have guessed Gengar actually. Why Gengar? I feel he's like he's got like the best Gen well, I think One speed stat in the game. I think he's adorable. Oh yeah. And I believe I read somewhere once, although maybe the lore is like updated or something, that he's misunderstood. Oh yeah. He plays tricks on you. Because he wants friends. But he Aww. scares everyone. 
That's adorable. But maybe actually he's actually evil now. I don't really know. But White Gengar looks amazing. Mega Gengar. Yeah, yeah. That's Mega, Mega Gengar is also Gengar is just a badass. Yeah. If he was real, you would, he's very fluffy. You would hug him. Yep. <laughs> and I he, agree. He would always be there for you. <laughs> You know that. <laughs> but it, the problem was is you needed to have friends in order to get him in the games. When I was really young, a lot of my friends were playing football instead of playing Pokemon. I don't have friends anyway. I play Karthus. Oh, did you just buy two <laughs> Game Boys and trade between yourself in order to get yeah. your Gengar? <laughs> That's what I did too. Oh, solidarity, dude. Don't worry. In the next games, if there are Pokemon that need to be traded, yeah, you get I both. am here for you. Or, oh, or I am that. here for you. I'm definitely buying a Switch for the next... Uh, oh, yeah. I've already got one. Don't worry. I'm sorted. Okay. I'm set. And thankfully, uh, Breath of the Wild was an incredible game, so that Switch buy was not anything that I regretted in this lead-up okay. towards getting the new generation of Pokemon, which is very exciting. So we're going to stop advertising Nintendo games and go back to this League of Legends match yeah. on your screen. But LS, as he so eloquently explained to you, nothing was going to happen until now as Bono dives his way forward. True Shot Barrage is going to be picked up and then immediately thrown out by Ruler. And we're back to it. So... <laughs> <let me> <laughs> <laughs> Let me give you the synopsis once All right, more. yeah, let's go, let's go. So for the next two minutes or so, they will fight over Vision on the left-hand side. The top wave will eventually be eaten by one of the carries on Han Wildlife, which is happening right now. Check on to the Baron's going to occur. Lisa will go and eat the Golems. Fiora may make her way down to the Gromp and then the Scuttle Cab. Eat that, push two waves bottom, recall again. Gentlemen's agreement will take place in mid lane for a little bit, maybe maybe a minute or two. Okay, until the control wards exactly. wear out, and then that battle for vision. See? Who can get the right reset, and then things are going to be okay. As you're, Ruler you're might learning. be bucking the trend. I am learning. I am slowly but surely. We're getting there. There we go. This, that being said, I mean now you're going to have to go for a reset very early as Bono's well and truly out of his health bar. Now Genji is going to have to move on back in. Is the Warmog's armor complete? And yes, it is. So that means next chunk out on the Zac is going to mean absolutely nothing. Yep. And uh, Lee Sin messing with the predictions here as he could not consume the golems. But some people might be wondering, well, why are they doing this? They should, they should be looking to do something. And you're very right. There's actually very specific things that could be done involving minion lane manipulation. But we don't see that in the LCK. <laughs> That all. Actually, we just don't see it in regions in general. And so this is what the lull state ends up devolving into, which is this, you push mid, I push mid, you push mid, I push mid, I yep. take turret, you take turret. Well, at the We're moment, it's up to the you take turret, and we'll see whether the you take turret actually exists here. As Ruler chucks down a control ward, and now Hanwha, with all of this extra map control, they get by taking out the uh, outer turret in the mid lane. That's going to be it. Decision they can make is Roach is going to get a lot of value out of that repost and Flash is actually, he's looking to chase after Tar, but he can't tank this turret as if that Morning Mist landed. That's so much damage coming in. And there we go. Bono is able to finish him off. And Roach bit off more than he could chew. That Flash after the Yorick, that was just, that was the that whoopsie. Was, that was the yeah. whoopsie moment. That was absolutely unnecessary. And do you know what it was? It was Roach looking at his items, yeah. and he had that speed boost, the Mario Kart speed boost, and then he's on Rainbow Road. He just goes straight off he's the edge. He's going really too excited. fast, yeah. too fast, misses the turn. Oh, no. And now we've got a kidnap. Now we've got a very dead Karma, and we've got Genji falling apart. Now, Fiora does have teleport available, so we'll have to see. If Han Wildlife can actually repel the Zack and guarantee that he can't enter or in, uh, the Peanut Lee Sin. He's going to get kicked back by Lava. Really nicely done to get the Lee Sin out of the pit. That's a 100% chance of gathering themselves the Baron buff. That is some beautiful play around what was some massive lulls for the first 30 minutes of this game. And now this Fiora split push win condition looks further and further away from being yeah. successful. And Roach just single-handedly threw the entire game with that. He already had gotten the flash from Thal, and it was reaching a point where Yorick wouldn't be able to contend with her anymore. And we take a quick look at it right here. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. And yeah, the flash, that's the whoopsie. Yeah, that's the whoopsie. Doesn't end up getting the vital. And even if you make the argument that in a different world, he gets the kill on Yorick, congratulations. You get the bottom tier two turret. Slow clap. Yeah, precisely. And that's what your job is. That's what you're supposed to do, right? In that scenario, Ruler is uh, gearing up towards what could be a Blade of the Ruin King or, of course, the uh, Hextech Gunblade that the Ezreals have decided to go for. I see 
no Sork Shoes on this Ezreal, so probably more like a Blade of the Room King. But Sangyun, he's on three and a half items. He's feeling peachy. On the Hyper Carry himself, as our Ruler gets tagged up, but isn't going to be too worried here. Pretty versatile is the Ezreal, so at least now we'll be able to try and repel some of these minions. There is a Rabidon's Death Cap on Fly, so he does have a lot of minion damage in this build. No penetration whatsoever. He's all about utility. And now that all of that AP has been built up, these Mantra Qs are going to help out. But with the Baron buff running, it's not going to be enough to save these turrets. Right. Top tier two now going to go down here in just a second. And these rotations are just so hard, right? Because you can see Bono, he's there. He does have his sweeper. He can stay out of vision. And Hanwha just going to move on forward. It's going to be pings down on the bottom in a turret, but four versus five. I just feel like the dive opportunity is going to be too relevant here as Ruler. Picks up a big shield from the Inspire, but look at that. Base is broken on the top side of the map. Might also be broken in the mid lane as well as Tal gets that Dark Procession down and he's able to stop Peanut from stopping that one. So two inhibitors for an inner turret bottom lane. I don't think I need to do the math for you guys. That is a bad news story for yeah. Genji. And they had already decided they could not defend. It's not worth bringing Roach back because it would end up being the same result except maybe some casualties added in. So even though it's not the best trade, Genji did try to make the most out of the situation that was handed to them. And now the one lane remaining yeah. will be the one that they are going to barrel down as super minions will be coming in from top and middle lane. And we're about to have a Lord of the Rings, except there's no Gandalf in this one. Yeah, he's not, he's not. He's sleeping. Yep. On the first light of the third day, well, we're on the second day. He's not here <laughs> yet. Um, unfortunately, Gandalf not going to be coming in with his uh, cavalcade of men of Gondor. Or whoever he came with. Did he grab some? Oh, no, he, he grabbed uh, Emo, didn't he? Headed on over and helped out. He said, yeah, sorry about your your uncle there. He was just being a bit of a jerk. He got possessed. So come back and help us out. He's like, all right. Just to give you the synopsis on what happens in uh, the two towers. Is, uh, that's going to be base broken bottom side of the map as well. It's Indo Sangyun. He gets completely impatient, but it pays off as he destroys Ruler. Kidnap successful. Both mid laner and AD carry have been removed as Peanut gets a cute kick. But it's only that. It's only cute as they have to watch these Nexus turrets fall. We're going to game number three. Is Hanwha Life a beautiful redemption match after Genji fell apart? Bottom side of the map. We can tell the time. We can tell the exact moment when it all went wrong and all the pieces of the puzzle just fell out for Genji. Yeah, there were there were two really key decisive moments inside of this game. The first one happened in bottom lane where Bono was able to go bottom, alt the bottom lane of Gen G, and then pick up the kills there, convert it into an Infernal Drake, plate capture, yada, yada, yada. And then the second time was when Roach decided to try to flash for a kill onto Tall down in bottom, ends up handing away the Baron at that. And so now, if we're thinking about who's the MVP of the game, Bono got the in initial Infernal thing started. He also got the shutdown onto Roach later, so it's most likely going to be him. Yeah, but I if, think I, if, Bono I'm throwing, if I'm throwing a little bit of salt, Roach is the MVP of this <laughs> game. Hanwha Life couldn't have done it without him. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, Bono got that kill onto Roach on that bottom side of the map as well, so it was also involved right. in uh, the pickup of the Fiora, which she got to three items and then, honestly, she threw them on the floor and said, I'm going home. <laughs> it was uh, not exactly what you wanted to see out of Roach. He played out the rest of the game very nicely, though, and I felt the Fiora win condition was certainly there. It's not like right. this was a Gen G that rolled over and died. The bottom lane gank was also fantastic from Bono yeah. to set Sangyun up to win the game, so I think you're exactly right. Bono deserves this MVP most definitely. And uh, I just liked that, yes, there was a lull in the mid-game. Mid yeah. Yes, we were talking about things like, you know, Lord of the Rings and Pokemon for a lot of it, but this game was not a game that was inherently lost by Gen G making oh, right. fatal mistakes. They made one mistake. Their top laner overextended yeah. trying to go for a kill, but this was still a really nice game of League of Legends on both sides. Oh, so going to game three, it's exciting. Yeah, th this was a game of chess that was going really long. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, some guy forgot to move his pawn. He got backdoor mated. Yeah. That's actually what yeah. just happened in this game. 
It, it was looking like it was gonna, you know, be a long, nice game. We're gonna yep. have a lot of moves, and then, whoops. Yeah, we were gonna be here all night. We'd <laughs> planned everything to make sure that we could uh, get all of this yep. chess in, but unfortunately, uh, you get halfway through and things go belly up. But, you know, these things happen. And so I actually really liked what we saw out of Genji, I thought that Fly was actually serviceable on the Karma in the mid lane. I hate yeah. the Karma pickup just in general yeah. a lot of the time, but I understood what it could actually do if you move into a late game scenario. And even if you've got Roach in the side lane, if he teleports into a team fight, gets himself an Arden sensor buff, then things can certainly be huge moving on forward. We unfortunately do not have any stats for this game, which means you're just going to have to hold on until game number three before we see any stats of any kind. And that means, guys, that we are going to be going to a short break. So when we get back, the deciding match between Genji and Hanwha Life.